the making of no games was actually very 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 fun um the making of no games process is actually really funny because it was never meant to happen in a in a way and what i mean by that is first and foremost no games is one of the only songs on the album that i personally didn't make the beat now the person who made the beat is prince he's a really really great friend of mine i've known him for years and actually uh, a funny story when well not a funny story but uh, a cool story about prince is that when i started to first make music as west of tech in the group that i was referring to um when we first started off we were looking for you know places to perform we were looking to, to do shows and things like that and we ended up you know getting in contact with someone who was doing a show you know what i'm saying it was down in miami you know it was basically going to be our first show our first performance so we went out there and there was another hip-hop group right and it was the spanish hip-hop group you know it was it was three people two guys a girl you know the girl she was you know she was singing you know just and rapping and the other two dudes were rapping and everything like that and when i watched them perform and when we were there like i was just so excited and so it was kind of like a sign of relief you know what i mean because it was one of those things it's like you know being a christian hip-hop artist can be cool as well you know what i'm saying like i i really enjoyed the music they were making and they you know they were just so cool to me and you know i was really just inspired by them when we were there so you know um i ended up becoming a huge fan of their music listening to their music all the time and you know we ended up collaborating on a song we ended up doing a song together and that was fun you know we did music video everything that was fun but you know after everything happened you know when the group disbanded and everything like that even though you know i wasn't doing any music anymore i was still checking in on them you know li and listening to their music and you know because we we became really good friends really great friends so in the process of being a producer and everything like that you know when i started transitioning into the producer realm you know me and uh you know, prince who who is their producer you know um we ended up having a bond, you know, a producer-producer bond, you know. So we ended up sharing insight with each other and things like that, you know. And at one point on my website, you know, I wanted to promote other producers, you know. Not just my own beats, but I wanted to have like a database of just, of just beats from all the producers that, you know, that I collaborate with that I personally know, you know, in case you're looking for beats and things like that. So I reached out to Prince. And I asked him, you know, if he wanted to be a part of it and everything like that. So he was like, yeah. So he basically um, sent me his SoundCloud link at the time, you know, where a lot of his beats were on. And, you know, I integrated it with my website and everything. And one day I just, you know, I was just going through the beats, you know, just actually they were just playing, you know, from one beat to the next. You know, as I was doing some things, I just had it playing in the background. And then this one particular beat came up. As soon as it started, I just remember being on the computer and I was just like, what was that? Who, wh what is that? And so, and then I look and then I was like, oh, this is one of Prince's beats. And I'm listening to it and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I need this beat. He can't, I can't, no. So I ended up calling him immediately and I was like, yo, Prince, man. You think it would be cool if I could use this beat for a song? And, you know, of course, you know, him being my buddy, he was like, yeah, absolutely, everything like that. So initially, you know, obviously when I made the song, you know, like it, it the it's the song came immediately to me. Literally, it came, the 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 melody came, na, 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 the melody came to me immediately like it i would say within maybe 10 minutes you know so from that point it was just a matter of just putting the words to it now at this time again like my move there was no concept of an album being made yet none this was literally just a beat i heard from prince and i was like i want to make it to a song you know what i'm saying and it actually no games actually ended up becoming my second single you know but it wasn't again like my move it wasn't something that was planned to be on the album or i didn't even have a thought process of an album in mind at this point right so 
when you know when this when, when i'm working on a single i start writing a single everything like that you know i start writing it no games the hook comes to me you know and i'm like oh my gosh you know it's, it's, it sounds cool you know what i'm saying and then i wrote my first 16 you know and i had the second part there and i, I was going to write a second 16 so what happened was i laid down my first 16 and i also laid down the hook once I laid down the hook in the 16, you know, I sent it over to Prince to get Prince's opinion on it. You know, he loved it and everything like that. I was like, all right, cool. I'm on the right track. This is going to be dope. This is going to be awesome. This is this is going to be my second single right here. This is going to be great. I love it. Right. So as I'm working on it, there was an artist that I was working at at the time because, you know, I own a recording studio. I work with other artists. You know, I'm still West Detective producer, the engineer. And there was an artist who was working at the t time. His name was Chato, right? Now, me and Chato, we're still cool to this day. Chato is awesome, you know. And listening to, you know, working with Chato, Chato, he's one of those artists that, like, I am truly a fan of. You know, he makes great music himself. You know, I actually helped him produce his, you know, his his debut album, everything like that. You know, I am truly, truly a fan of Chato's music. So, uh, one day... Um, before Chato got to the studio, I was working on No Games. I was working on a single. You know, I was just um, messing around with it. I was mixing at the time. You know, Chato comes in, you know, and as he's getting settled, you know, I'm kind of just shutting, you know, shutting the song down, closing the application and everything like that to get ready for the appointment, you know. And he's like, you know, um, what you been up to? I was like, you know, I was just working on, you know, working on something. And he's like, what are you working on? I was like, Oh no, no, nothing, nothing. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm making a song. He's like, wait, you rap? I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't really tell nobody or anything like that because you know, I released my move, my move, my, my first single, but I didn't promote my move or anything like that. No one really knew about my move, to be honest, because when I released my move, I kind of just released it for me. You know what I'm saying? It just, just to kind of prove to myself that. Now is the time for Connect to Start and I can do this. So that's really what my move was. But I wasn't, I had no intentions of making a big deal out of my move. So I didn't promote it and he had no idea that I actually made music. So when he was like, wait, you make music? Wait, what? I thought you was just a producer. I was like, no, you know, I made, I made Christian hip hop and everything like that as well. You know, so he was like, let me hear it. And you know, I, so at this point, I'm nervous because I don't want to show it to him because for multiple two of the reasons one you know i'm like i'm just starting out you know and i consider him you know a, a, an amazing artist you know what i'm saying it's like yo i can't make anything compared to what this dude can make you get what i'm saying so i already have that doubt and fear that i'm messing with already right and then on top of that you know it's christian music you know what i mean and i remember at the time i was like you know you probably don't want to listen to his christian hip-hop and you know and I don't know why I used to do that back then, by the way. You know, like, it was difficult for me to let people know that I made Christian music. Not that I was ashamed of it. I guess I was afraid of just ju the the judgment of it's probably corny or it's probably not good because it's Christian music. You know what I'm saying? So I used to have a little fear that, I mean, I'm way past that now. You know, I'm Christian music 24-7. You already know what I'm about now. But at the time, it was very difficult to tell people that. You know what I'm saying? So... When I was like, ah, oh, now you probably, you know, it's, it's Christian music. He was like, so? And it was one of those things. <laughs> I felt so stupid because I was like, yeah, he's absolutely right. Why Why am I making a big deal out of this? It's, you know, you know, like when someone makes music, they make music. You know, it's whatever the content is, it's, it's still music at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? It's not like someone who makes, like, let's say someone who makes R&B music. It's like, hey, you want to listen to my song? Oh, before you listen to it, it's R&B music. So... Are you cool with R&B? You know, people don't do that. They just, you listen to it. And if you like it, you like it. But for some reason, I kept putting that restriction and limitation on myself when it came to it. So, you know, I let him listen to it. You know, I played the track for him and, you know, his head is down and I'm just looking at the screen. You know, I don't want to look at his face. I don't want to get his reaction. You know what I'm saying? So he's listening to it and he's like, bro, let me hop on this. I was like, are you serious? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm like, because at the end of the day, I'm like, wait, you actually want to hop on this song? My song? Like, you know what I mean? He's like, bro, it sounds dope. Yeah, bro, it would be dope. I, I, I'll i definitely hop on this. This is like, you got to open verse. I was like, yeah, I mean, I have a second verse. I was going to write a second verse, but if you want to hop on it, you know what I'm saying? Like, are you sure? Are you okay with that? You know, it's a Christian. He was like, bro, 
It's a dope song. Music is music, bro. I'll hop on it, bro. And it was just, it was so funny because it was just such a learning moment for me. You get what I'm saying? Because it, it's like, again, putting restrictions on myself just because it's a particular genre of music. I don't know why we do that to ourselves, but it's just one of those things I feel like he was Jesus in that moment and I wasn't. You get what I'm saying? I put, I passed judgment on him before he even even thought to pass judgment on me. I was like, oh no, he's not gonna like it. You know, you know, he's this and this. he's not really church going like that. So he don't, he's not gonna want it. He's he's gonna think I'm literally passing judgment on him. You know what I'm saying? And it was just such a learning moment for me. And it was one of my favorite moments in just the whole creation of just all the music that I made because I learned something that day. You know what I'm saying? And from that day, like it really changed my whole perspective on not only me but how I present my music to people. And it also changed my perspective on who I would actually do music with. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's like, at this point, when it comes to making music, I make music with people I know. I make music with my friends, you know, my friends, my family, you know, people I get down with, you know what I'm saying? They may not be as religious as I am. They may not be as Christian as I am. They may be, they may believe in another belief. You know what I'm saying? But I don't feel like that's something that should stop music from being made you know what i'm saying as long as they're cool with glorifying who i'm glorifying on the track i'm cool with it you know what i'm saying and that's what it basically came down to and you know chattel you know he went he went home he came back a couple of days later he was like all right uh, he's ready i'm like I, right, you know because with with him i never have to listen to what like he usually just nails it so i hit the record button and yeah, I ain't with the games, don't push my buttons. They can never stop me or slow me for nothing. That was that was uh like I said, a very, very cool experience. That was very dope just seeing that happen. You know what I'm saying? And to this day, like I, it's it's one of those those moments that I'll never forget because it really just changed my perspective on just music. You know, it re it really put that perspective or put the stamp on music is universal. You get what I'm saying? And so when it came to him dropping his feature, obviously he jumped on there and he did like, it was incredible. I sent it over to Prince and Prince absolutely loved it. And he was like, yo, this is dope, everything like that. So I end up releasing No Games as my second single. Now, again, at this point in time, the journey was not a thought process. The journey was nothing to be made of, right? The journey was just simply not existent it was just my move my first single the uh, no games my second single so when when no games actually came out you know the reception of it and people listening to it i was getting really good reception to it and i was i was kind of surprised because i enjoyed the song the song was fun for me but I didn't really think people, I didn't really have a thought process of how people was going to take the song, honestly. You know what I'm saying? At this point, I didn't really care. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, yo, this is a dope song. I love it. You know, and once I started getting feedback from it from, I mean, so many different people, even people, I'm like, yo, how'd you even find out about the song? You know what I mean? It was just so many people actually enjoyed the song. I think that was the defining moment that I sat there and I realized that I can do this. I can absolutely do this. There's the there's the the first step that you get past and okay, can I even make music? Right? And once you get past that step, you're like, okay, I can make music. Then you gotta get to this to the step of can I actually make good music or music that people will like? So you know what I'm saying? And it, once you get past that step, it's like, okay, now can I actually make a career out of music? You know what I'm saying? So I got with the help of no games, I got past that step of I can actually make music that people like. And, you know, that's why No Games will probably share, you know, a really special place in my heart because of everything that was tied to just the making of it and how it was actually made, right? So I say all that to say, you know, when it comes to, you know, just your purpose, whatever your purpose is in life, you know what I'm saying? Don't put any limitations on it in any way, shape, or form, right? Because you never know what God has in store for you with your purpose, you know? You might think that your purpose is to, you know, minister to people, 
you know, to, let's say, the elderly. Now, if you just limit yourself to the elderly, there's a whole world, a whole other group of people that you may never even think to minister to because your focus is on the elderly. You know, I know that may not be the best example, but you just want to keep your options open and you want to keep the your headspace and mind open to what God can bring to you. You know what I'm saying? So that'll that's probably the biggest lesson that I learned in the process of making no games and since I particularly didn't make this beat, you know what I'm saying? I did want to share, take the opportunity to share some of the recording process that I have with you guys when it comes to, you know, just not just making this song, but just making all the songs. You know what I'm saying? I use Logic to make my beats, but I actually use Pro Tools to actually record my vocals. And there are certain things that I do typically with my vocals that I kind of just wanted to share with you guys for the purpose of this of this episode. And really what I wanted to show you guys is, you know, when it comes to recording, you know, I think my favorite part of recording is the ad-libs. I love doing ad-libs. It's one of those things that if I, if I wasn't an artist, I would be the perfect ad-libber or the perfect, you know, um, back, the, the hype man, so to speak, because I excel at ad-libs. I can do better ad-libs than verses sometimes, you know? And it's just so funny because, you know, going to the No Games track, these ad-libs that I did right here, which is this yellow right here, that was all done in one take. I had no I had no idea what I was going to do or how I was going to do it. I just remember pressing recording and then did it, and and this is what it ended up being. Folks made it. I bet you made your mama proud. I'ma get this soon. I claim it, and I don't even need to cry. I bet they probably hate you now. I heard they try to tear you down. They saying that you change with the fame just because you see the world a little different now. But that's cool. This is how the truth unfolds. Gotta get goals to fit your mold. Thank God that you know what I'm saying? I follow his place with accent, bows like bow. Buddy, I'ma do my thing. Cream of the crop like creme brulee. Rapping my God that I ain't changed. So I ain't trying to hear what you gon' say. You know what I mean? And, and that, I think, like... Doing the ad-libs for me is one of the funnest parts of the song because that's the moment that, you know, I'm not really thinking about getting everything right. It's just, that's the funnest part of making a song for me is when I'm actually doing the ad-libs. It just so happens that I typically don't have to re-record it or anything like that because I usually nail it the first time, you know? So that's my superpower when it comes to <laughs> making music. You know what I'm saying? I love doing ad-libs. I will forever continue to do ad-libs. It's just one of those things that I do. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely just wanted to take the opportunity to kind of get you a behind-the-scenes look of, you know, what it looks like when it comes to making or doing the actual recording part of the song. But all in all, No Games, like I said, is one of my favorite tracks. I absolutely love doing it, you know, and I pray and hope that, you know, I can make more songs like No Games, honestly. No Games is just, I feel like it's the perfect representation of me as an artist, you know, even though, you know, there's so many different dynamics to me, you know what I'm saying, as a person, but No Games at its funnest, at its purest form is like the closest reflection to me, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's No Games. I ain't trying to hear